All right, go for it. Come around so you guys don't have to turn around. My presentation isn't very long. Uh, I think you guys all know the building that I have. Uh, you've all driven by it like a hundred thousand times, and it's been boarded up since. Uh, kind of differing opinions on that, and the condition previous to, to it being boarded up was pretty bad before that. I'm talking about 302 East Victory Drive, straight down Lincoln Street here on the corner of Victory. That's going to be the uh, northeast corner, three-story brick building with the with the three stories of um, kind of covered porches on the front. And what I brought to Jason uh, a couple weeks ago was that unfortunately we, we've owned this building for almost two years we have run it any number of ways that we can to try and make it into long-term apartments and it doesn't work um, the bank won't finance it uh, the construction costs are what all of us know they're out of control both material costs and labor costs um, so the bank bank doesn't see it as a, as a practical project to fund the value of the building is now is less than what it will take to bring it up to a habitable condition. So we're kind of forced to look at alternative uh, ways to make it work, and one of those is to go short-term vacation. We're a mix of long and short-term over the course of the next five to 10 years. So that, we, we don't want the building to sit as it is. Uh, the building's in, Reasonably good condition as it is. It does have some structural issues. Uh, I'm sure if you walk around it, you can probably point it out the whole back of the northwest corner. You can see where one of those boarded windows has fallen in. You can't access it because the floors are so damaged from roof leaking over the last probably 20 years that we can't even walk in that room to put that board back up. Yes? Did you say where it was located? Sure, just straight down Lincoln Street. It's going to be the northeast corner. Lincoln and Victory, that's 302 East Victory. Street. So it's across the street from the Palm Reader, right? Yeah, and yeah. Mrs. Hope is right next door. Yeah. Have they ever visited Mrs. On the south side of the street? Uh, I don't believe she's ever visited. No, on the north side, so it's in our neighborhood. It's a large corner building. Yeah. Yeah. Can you pull it up? Uh, I don't have to that. I wish I could. Sorry, it's a yeah. gray brick. It's kind of a gray brick building. It has three stories, uh, two on either side. Is so it behind the dentist? It is. It, so yeah, the dentist is going to be on Street, this is on Lincoln, and then on Victory itself. So it's it's a pretty large building, but you've probably driven by it a thousand times, and it's kind of blended into the background because nothing has happened to it. How many units of short-term vacation rentals are these? Is this like a room, or is it like... So our, our current plans right now for 12 units, each being two bedroom, one bath, and that's to kind of Yes, we don't want to go bigger than that because you get parties and don't really want to go smaller than that. We want to get to like maybe a family or two couples is our ideal kind of person. Not we're not trying to host, you know, huge groups. This is for people that want to stay in this area maybe to see a concert or because they don't want to be downtown. Go eat at Just Go eat at Rose Shoes. Go to South Yard. Sorry, go ahead. I, I mean, this is all well and good, but I'm. I, I appreciate you telling us, but since it sounds like it's not a commercial development, I'm not even sure why you bring it to the zone. Sure, yeah, yeah. No, good question. Good question. Um, it's currently zoned uh, traditional neighborhood, and it needs to go traditional commercial. So it's going to go before the zoning board for a reason to get that rezoned. So I didn't want to circumvent this group and just go hire a lawyer and go to the city and try and force this down everybody's throat. I'd rather come here and answer all the questions that you guys have uh, before we take that next step. Okay, yeah. you know? Makes sense. So what kind of precedent is that going to set for a lot of people? Well, I'm not putting up the building. The building's already there. No. I'm not changing the footprint. Yeah, We're not sure really right. changing right the skirt. Zone for Sorry? That's why he's asking for the change of zone. This is the rezone. So this is why. <laughs> you know, if somebody else has an almost 50,000 square foot building that's been boarded up for 30 years and they can't develop it because it's too expensive, it's the only way to do it for the But you can design. develop it for short term rentals, but you can't develop it for yes. anything else. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the income based approach that the banks use when, when 
financing commercial and real estate projects like that, you know, the value of the building is based on how much money that building can make. Right now, it'll take roughly three and a quarter to three and a half million dollars to do that building. And when it's done, it'll be worth three million dollars. So you can see where the gap there is, which is the real issue. Uh, it, it, the bank, so it's, when it's done, it's underwater. There's no equity. So if I could add something, the, the, the zoning actually zigzags a little bit around that property. So there is traditional commercial right next door and right behind it, but it's kind of this little island with a couple of traditional neighborhoods. So it's not, <laughs> they just move a line over there. And, so. and it is within the SDVR map, I believe. It is, because so it's not only asking it for SDVR. Uh, Area, if you're just rezoning the building, itself. Yes. correct. Yeah, does it have parking? It does not, it has never had parking. That is something that I have discussed. Uh, so, we did get approval when we bought the building to do 12 apartments with no parking. We don't intend to do an SDVR with no parking. Uh, we're gonna try and talk to you know the dentist who's right behind that lot sits pretty vacant on the weekends. Uh, there's also a condo building. I don't know if anybody lives in that condo building. Got a caddy corner directly behind Miss Hope. That that is very underutilized parking area as well. So maybe there's a possibility of, of leasing some of the parking adjacent. Um, so that's kind of where we're trying to go with that parking issue. But again, you know, it's with short-term vacation rentals and the size of party, it's 50/50 whether or not they're even going to have a car. 50/50 whether. 50/50 whether or not they have a car, or they'll just fly in Uber there and then walk or Uber from there. Uh, sure. license, and since you're bringing it up to the neighborhood, yeah. um, you can say you don't know, but um, what about the city's licenses as far as short-term rental if no one's living there? So yeah, there is uh, different provisions for different yeah. boards downtown as far as capping, how many can be in a board that are not under occupied versus under occupied versus <laughs> cap. So this would be shifting it from a residential zone to which would kind of make that more possible for uh, those licenses. You know, if you have a commercial zone in downtown, that, that kind of uh, STBR is a commercial use. You kind of aren't getting a change in that residential zone. Does that make sense? If, if I can answer that, in, in our neighborhood, we actually did not do the cap, like downtown and Victorian. We instead linked to ownership. So in residential areas, you must have an owner present Correct. and a second unit. But this is the whole reason he wanted to shift into a commercial zoning, mm -hmm. is because it puts you into a different category of regulation. Yeah. Sorry, much better. Yeah. 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 Better explanation, thank you. Are you planning on putting up a parking before you're, you're gonna? This is, we don't want to go down the parking track and spend all that time if we're not gonna get the Rezo. It's kind of a carpet for the so If we look good for Rezo, then we're gonna pursue parking and both those options kind of at the same time. What about the building that's right across? Oh, is the green truck right there as well? The green truck's like a block over and I think two blocks up? Yes. Yeah. So that great big parking sure. lot uh, between the green truck and whatever that building is. So you get insurance company. It's never used either. Oh. I, I agree, yeah. That's, that's another option. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit several years ago now, when Lone Wolf was going through this problem, they they negotiated with the dentists, I think, to you know use their parking, even though they typically never have to. Yeah. But there's lots of underused parking where the time scales of when the businesses are using it kind of coincide with when someone else might use it in the off hours. So rather than needing to build more parking, maybe we can collaborate to just use the parking we have. Yeah. yeah. That's why we like to use the dentist because it is right behind and he's not open. Which is where we're going to probably see the most traffic. What will happen to the building if you don't get it? Got it, got it. This I put it up for sale, no one bought it. I uh, had it under contract several times. Those people couldn't make it work. And uh, some of them had a lot more money than I do. I mean, seriously, there's it is an uphill battle with banks right now. And, and this is kind of, as we see, the only route forward uh, to get the building from where it is right now and where it's been deteriorating for the last maybe 30 years to something that is going to be you know, a beautiful historic 1920s building. If you get 
Oh, it'll take a full year, at, at least. Yeah, that's, I mean, the construction timelines for, for this use versus the partner may the same. Um, and it's, it'll be a full year, more than likely. Uh, that's, that's contractor speak, so 18 yeah. months. <laughs> 24 months <laughs> Yeah. Don't get me started. Uh, I just finished the house just at the street. It's nine months, two years ago. That's a question for us to consider. Uh, I mean, before we had a you know a debate or discussion about this, I wanted to give him the opportunity to come in and speak, um, and I'm very glad that he did. And I think this is what we are working towards as a neighborhood group. We want people, developers like him, to come feel comfortable speaking to us, even if he thinks he's giving us an idea that maybe not everyone likes. But this is the best way to talk about it. No, we, and, don't, we don't um, want a hotel. We don't, we don't want it to be a hotel. We want it to be an Airbnb building. We don't want to offer a bar, a restaurant, a laundry service or Valley Market, you know, we don't want to offer those things. And, you know, I own all the buildings in, I don't live in Top Square, I live downtown. I live basically right up the street from here, just in the historic district. But I also, um, I think it's right over there, um, Price 37. I bought that and put that deal together with Mood Rights. That building's about to be redeveloped. And then through uh, some help from Kevin, uh, we have also invested in um, I'm not brewing just across the street from us uh, to try and, you know, we're not, we're not, not local. I live up the street and the bike can come from here. He says, yeah. So, I can see the difference. So as a neighborhood, we had to decide, you know, to see a building like that preserved that's been empty for what, 30 years? More bank, more yeah, so I mean, what are we willing to, you know, allow to maybe, you know, bend what we, you know, want to see a little bit? But um, again, we'll talk about it. Yeah. 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 I, on that um, preserving building not going to be 
a big, you know, we're not going to do a big neon sign inside of it, broadcasting that it's an Airbnb. Just not with that. It's just not going to affect how we, we reach the like, how we restore the yeah. 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 The inside will be, you know, so the inside is not in a great condition right now. Um, it's, parts of it are not accessible because the floors are not safe. Um, there was a fire in that building, which is what ultimately led to being boarded up. The top floor has totally been gutted. There's smoke damage throughout the rest of the building. So a lot of the classrooms is taken down. There's just there's not a lot in there after that many years to preserve. The so the 99 window thing replaced. I yeah. saw the entire building on the bottom. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Yeah, um, 99 wooden windows. So and then some of them are. You're going to put single pane windows in all of those. What's that? You're going to replace them with single pane. Well, we, you know, it's going to be on a case by case basis. Some of them, because it hasn't been boarded up and they haven't been repainted a million times and they haven't been messed with, some of them still work. Some of them still have ballast in them. You can raise low them with one paper. And they're still very well made, but there's a lot that are just going on. You know, either from the fire or from the, you know, from them putting the fire out. It almost causes more damage to the rest of the building. Um, you know, there's, there's, they get 99 windows. Right, so are you on the city schedule already for rezoning or not? Well, I think what we'll do is um, you know, we'll post this video and we'll put it on the website and hopefully consider, continue the conversation there and you know, see how everyone feels about this. All right, any other questions tonight? But this, like I said, this conversation will continue. All right, cool. Um, do we have the tax commissioner here yet? Yes, okay.